I want to read a piece from the New York Times um, in the New York Times Style and Culture magazine called The Long and Tortured History of Cancel Culture by Ligaya Misham. She writes, so much has been written about cancel culture in the past year that weariness sets in just reading the words. What it is, what to call it, and whether it even exists are all in dispute. The term is symbolically applied to incidents both online and off that range from vigilante justice to hostile debate to stalking, intimidation, and harassment. She gives a number of examples of people who have uh, done something you know, arguably one could say is um, hurtful to another person, but then the consequence as you point out, becomes not just to even the score or prevent more of more bad actors. The, the, it takes on a life of its own and it becomes almost like revenge and punishment. Um, and, uh, you know, even some people would talk about the idea of the, the, the conversations of uh, removing Confederate monuments, like going on a sort of a, a list through American history and saying, you know, who had any, <clears throat> did you have a speck of affiliation? Did somebody in your family own slaves? Well, then you're, you should not have a building named after you or something like that. So taking what might be a kernel of a good, of a good idea and then applying it so broadly that it ends up harming people. Um, you mentioned this is not a new thing, I guess. I, I wonder, uh, how do you teach this? How, how does it come up in, in, in the subjects that you're, you're teaching a class about the politics in the era of Donald Trump? How does it, how does it come up? Well, it's, um, you know, whenever you're teaching a controversial subject, regardless of whether it's about uh, the president or about uh, American political thought or the, you know, this, this, uh, things that are controversial in general, it's, it's always a challenge in a classroom. Um, and you always try as a, as a teacher to create a space in which people feel comfortable saying, um, things that, that they think. And of course, sometimes that means students say things that are, uh, that are difficult for others to hear. Um, and, um, that makes it just, you know, that, that, that's part of the challenge of teaching, uh, controversial subjects. Um, and in my politics in, in the age of Trump course, is sometimes that's come up. Sometimes the, uh, the conversation becomes heated. Um, you know, one of the, there's a couple of things, uh, that I do. One of them, uh, in just thinking about American politics is to, is to turn to the research that we have and the theories that we have. Because even though it's hard for anyone to get rid of their bias, um, there's a lot of good political science research out there about um, controversial subjects and um, and looking at empirical data. And so rather than having a dialogue turn into a, well, I believe this or no, you're wrong that, right. um, we look to things that people have written. Well, here's here's the history, right? Here's the what the statistics tell us. Here's what the analysis tells us. Um, and then let's engage with that. Um, I actually also do something in, in my classroom that um, that has worked pretty well, which is I, I talk about how American politics is, we comp I compare it to a game, like a football game, okay? And you've got two teams, like two parties. You've got uh, the refs, who are like the, the judicial branch. You've got, you know, uh, ESPN, which is like the media. And so when we study American politics, it's all different pieces of this football game. And then I ask the students, so who are we in this football game? When we're in class, who are we in this game? Uh, and some students say well, we're the fans. Uh, some students say that we're the ones who are writing the rules of the game. Um, but what I tell them is that who we are in this football game is we are the Goodyear blimp. We are above the game, right? And we're looking at all the different pieces. And so if at some point our debate turns into the game itself, where we're fighting over which side is the better side or whatever, I, t I just remind the students, go back to the Goodyear blimp. Okay, you can have your opinions, absolutely, and you want to debate them, that's fine. But in the classroom, we're trying to learn some higher truths about American politics. So we go back up to that Goodyear blimp. That's